Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We can hear you fine. Yeah, fine. Yeah, we can start. Yeah. Good evening, sir. And, good evening, uh, good evening. Yeah, I'm sorry for the attendees. My name is Arun Tutta. I am the convener of DP. I, along with my team, uh, welcome all of you to this 21st webinar of the debrief webinar series. Our speaker today is uh, Mr. Justice Kurian Jukhu, who recently retired as a judge of the Supreme Court of India. All of us have interacted with uh, Justice Kurian Joseph either in the form of appearing before him in all school judgments. I do not really want to uh, give a long drawn introduction to our speaker about our speaker and labor the time any further. I will, however, quote uh, our Attorney General, Mr. K.K. Venu Gopal, as I feel he was able to identify the bar member sentiments about Justice Kurian Joseph um, at the farewell that uh, the Supreme Court Bar Association had organized uh, when Justice Joseph retired. Um, the Attorney General said, and very rightly so in all our opinion, that if anybody were to conduct a poll as to who was the nicest judge to have held the office of a judge of the Supreme Court, uh, Justice Kurian Joseph would win by a large margin. So we all wholeheartedly adopt this statement of the learned Attorney General. Thank you. Thank you. One of the main reasons, sir, we share this sentiment is the compassionate manner in which you conducted your court. As junior practitioners, we've had occasions to appear before you. And while we waited for our matters to uh, be called out, many a time we would be privy to you going out of your way to persuade parties to resolve their disputes. Now, as lawyers, of course, even in your experience as a lawyer, you must have uh, you must have seen how difficult it is to persuade a part, persuade a client, and especially a successful client, to settle the dispute and to resolve the dispute, especially at an appellate stage. Uh, we this is why we requested you to speak about alternate dispute resolution mechanisms and frame the topic as the importance of mediation in litigation. At the first blush, perhaps uh, it may seem to be an oxymoron because litigation itself is adversarial and no litigating party is ever ready to really uh, 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 go for mediation. But I'm certain uh, by the end of this lecture, we will all see that mediation is in fact very important in litigation. Uh, without taking any more of your time, I would now request our speaker to deliver his address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Abhay. I'm really touched by your uh, overwhelming words of uh, praise for me. Thank you. Um, it's not personal to a uh, Korean. I always tell the judges, you know, it is the, the obligation of any judge to have a constitutional compassion. This is how I look at it. Am I audible to everybody? Hello? Yes, sir. You're loud and clear. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so constitutional compassion always, uh, I, I uh, discharge very passionately. I'm still very passionate about it because, see, otherwise, you know, why are you appointed as a judge? You're appointed as a judge to interpret law and uh, apply law in a particular set of facts and to render justice. So how do you find out justice? Justice uh, without mercy, according to me, is uh, arbitrariness. And mercy without uh, justice is equally arbitrariness and it is imprudent also. Therefore, a judge is called upon to be uh, an instrument in the hands of the constitution to render justice with uh, a constitutional mercy. What is that constitutional mercy? Constitutional mercy is for we the people. And who are we the people? We the people, you know, you might have seen that, I've heard that the famous, uh, it's a constitution of the baker, butcher, and candlestick maker. Today, I don't think that the baker would come in that category, butcher would come into that category, or candlestick maker would come into that category. Maybe after COVID, it's true. 
but uh, post constitution maybe after uh, two three decades uh, these people um, i don't think would uh, constitute that uh, the the uh, the we whom the constitution stood for if you ask me today who are those we i would say the migrant workers the asha workers the safai karmacharis maybe these are the categories who would come to this constitution be the people so when we interpret the constitution these are the places whom should we should have in our mind who are the the last the least and the lost so in interpreting any provision in the constitution we should have uh, we should have this in our mind that this constitution is for those people survival of the rich and survival of the fit not an issue at all they will survive but the protection of the poor and protection of the weak and protection of this poor and weak i would say the least the last and the lost to whom only the 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 court can lean for because uh, in the political policies they may not be a vote bank because they are an unidentified group they may be an illiterate group and uh, as uh, the very word says you know they are not organized also so the political parties may not be interested in them because they are not organized but the constitution should be interested in them because it is the constitutional obligation of the court as the guardian of the constitution to protect the dignity of uh, the individual we see the preamble it speaks about uh, justice equality liberty and fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual for us indians it doesn't matter whether somebody is rich or poor somebody is uh, beautiful or ugly looking somebody is uh, learned or not learned somebody belongs to this religion or that religion somebody belongs to this caste or that caste somebody belongs to this tribe or that tribe somebody belongs to the south or somebody belongs to the east somebody belongs to the west or somebody belongs to the north irrespective of caste color creed religion language sex region or your material possession or your um, positions all are equal before law and all are entitled to equal protection of law the moment this equal protection of law is denied at the hands of the people who rule the country we call it government and i don't mean a political sense party sense but i'm saying the moment this equal protection of uh, the dignity is denied by the government it is the that juncture the guardian should wake up it is the duty of the guardian to protect them the very word the very meaning of the word guard and guardian is the same if i am a guardian of my wards even if my one of my children is uh, uh, lazy ugly looking uh, you know not smart um, not up to the states of whom i expect him etc even then when he cries as a guardian is my conscience that should uh, respond i don't say no 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 i won't give you i won't give you food i, I want to help you to uh, work i won't provide you a seat in my car because you are ugly you are dirty no 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 go out no and no guardian will ever say no conscientious guardian will say that no guardian with a conscience will say that that's so where you no know, i i just wanted to speak something about this uh, constitutional compassion it's not the charity of a judge but the obligation of the court and if the court does not remember that obligation what to do there is no other place to go the last resort is the court the first resort is the government last resort is of uh, 
is the quote. Yeah, let me leave that topic. Let me come to this uh, alternate dispute resolution. This mouse clicked totally because somebody said something about compassion. So the moment it comes, you know, my passion simply burns. Yeah. What is this alternate dispute resolution? The moment we say alternate, the moment we say alternate, it's, it's uh, not a normal method. Normal method is if you have a grievance, it becomes a dispute, then it becomes a litigation. That is the normal route. We take recourse to the uh, court for redressal of our grievances, for settling our rights, and uh, pro for protection of our rights also. We go to court like that. But if there is any other place, what is a court, by the way? Court is a service, not a place where people, you see, we have uh, this uh, idea, we conceive of court like this in a place where you know, somebody sits on top and uh, somebody calls him, my Lord, your honor. And uh, all those, you know, it comes up like that. That is not the, the situation. That is not actually the, the idea of court. The idea of court is that it's a service where, you know, under the constitution and the laws, you get your disputes resolved by taking recourse to constitutional methods. It's simply called rule of law. You go and, uh, you get your rights protected. Well, that's the place. And that is that is a service. So let's forget about this uh, huge bill, the attire or uh, the, the, uh, the paraphernalia attached to it, etc. It's a service rendered to the people under the constitution. So in the normal route, that service is, you know, through an established procedure. We call it civil procedure code, we call it uh, criminal procedure code, and we have the evidence and then uh, et cetera, et cetera. It goes in, it's, it's a, there's an established procedure. But with all that, if we can really see if this grievance can be redressed or dispute can be resolved, even without the normal method of uh, uh, the, the taking the course to all the procedural uh, rigmarole or procedural aspects. Why do we waste our time? What happens, you know, I have a property dispute with my neighbor. When I say this, you know, uh, in the most literate state, Kerala, even during this uh, pandemic, maybe I don't know whether this depression was a cause. Two people, both are aged at 80. They're in the 80s. And their neighbors, they had a property dispute. You now one man, you know, maybe I don't know, he got whatever reason, I do not know. He, he brutally killed his neighbor. And the reason is that there was uh, a pending dispute between them on, uh, um, um, in respect of their uh, property. Neighborhood, maybe it's a boundary dispute, nothing else, I do not know. I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything about the merits of the matter, but say, so look at the, Look at the, 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 the way the mindset worked, even at the age of 80, both are 80. So how many years the litigation should have been pending between them? What result? The reason is, according to our system prevailing now, your grievance becomes a dispute, dispute becomes a litigation, litigation go to the first instance, somebody wins, second instance, somebody wins, third instance, somebody wins, and you have the Supreme Court also, they are also not somebody will somebody. I do not think that there is in a, in a litigation process, the court will be in a position to, to make both happy unless there is such a judge who will be in a position to uh, convince the other side as to why he lost. No, he should be, he, he should be in a position to educate that uh, party as to why he lost and why the other party wins. Both are important. But is it possible in our system now? Will any lawyer agree? Even if the judge convinces the other side, 
the lawyer says no no that is your version but uh, what i argued was the right thing lawyer will never give up and the party who lost also will never give up that is because because of you do not understand law correctly or because you no know, they may even attribute what you to the judges also sometimes yes yeah, forget that aspect so it is in that context uh, i was looking at a situation where the people should be happy both should be happy i always when i go to national judicial academy um for training of judicial officers i used to ask them a question civil judge junior division or senior division whenever they come uh, they are all judges come but particular to these people and district judges i used to ask a one question have you in your experience maybe long years have you ever seen a client going out of the court saying that you know my rights have been vindicated i am happy even if i have a dispute again i will come to this place only where i because i find my self respect is protected my rights have been understood and you know this is the place where i should come again the 99% of uh, even i can say with the confidence it is 100% people have said you know <laughs> they have only seen people going out of the court cursing the institution not the judge cursing the institution maybe because of the delay maybe because of the money they had to spend maybe because of their frustration maybe because of uh, you know circumstances beyond anybody's control they are only seen cursing the people so my uh, attempt all through my experience as a judge uh, spanning over almost to 19 years 18 years and uh, maybe six months or so yeah is to see that to, how to get out of the people from the court at their least so even before this established mediation proceedings uh, started i in my own way started uh, this mediation when i was a judge in kerala when there was 10 years then i used to involve lawyers train them in open court just give them a brief and asking them to i don't do have these parties to speak and settle yeah my result was almost uh, uh, 75% only very few no 75% yeah yeah in kerala my result was 90% yes very only very few people uh, couldn't meet with success that is because of uh, some extraneous reasons in the sense you know some party was not available or some other case was pending somewhere else or uh, you know things like that only so my attempt was always to see you know, to get out of the helping the people get out of the court how do you do it in uh, when the section 89 cpc was uh, amended we have uh, four methods of alternate dispute so regular method is court alternate is outside court what is that alternate four methods one is arbitration again it is governed by the arbitration conciliation act 1996 as of now uh, where we have uh, which i do now i am an arbitrator now Uh, maybe sole maybe co arbitrator maybe presiding arbitrator i do arbitration ever since my retirement in number 18 then um, i do my mediation also second is mediation so one is arbitration the other is mediation there is uh, judge in word conciliation fourth is log adalat this uh, arbitration is governed by the arbitration and conciliation act and this uh, log adalat is governed by the um, uh, legal service authorities act where you get the service of uh, retired personnel or some um, well meaning people also to help you to find out uh, a solution for the problems and where we have uh, uh, this conciliation where you know you can actually give your evaluative assessment of the situation and persuade the parties to reach a settlement and the last one which i want to stress today is mediation so what is mediation mediation actually is something which is in the blood of everybody this is what i have found always all lawyers are good mediators according to me but they need to be trained also because this 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 needs to be uh, what you call systematic and organized so that is how to take forward mediation in mediation what is important is that you know the parties should agree that this case can be referred to a trained mediator or a mediator what or what or name call it a mediator and um, you know the mediator will uh, will be a neutral person number one number two he should be in a position to get the confidence of both the parties number three the proceedings are confidential even if the mediation fails uh, he cannot tell the court as to why it is failed 
you can only write one sentence the mediation failed uh, i always write mediation as of now failed i do my mediation i do mediation also in many cases uh, corporate disputes uh, property disputes matrimonial disputes even patent disputes have been referred to me from the supreme court rather courts i do mediation also uh, along with my arbitration yeah so the it's been neutral person he should have the confidence about the people and uh, he should maintain confidentiality and uh, what i do is even if there's some difficulty i will say uh, mediation failed as of now so confidentiality and then you know with the assistance of the parties and the lawyers uh, you will find uh, a solution how do you find a solution i'll tell you the mediation process now so before the mediator the parties come so the mediator will make the parties aware of their uh, respective positions and the relationship they are in if it is matrimonial the relationship property neighborhood neighborhood corporate the the, the legal position and in the corporate uh, uh, what do you call uh, legal relationship they have to maintain etc and then uh, you know uh, all these disputes you know, as i told you, you know from grievance becomes a dispute becomes a litigation so from the the, the mediator's next uh, great role is to identify what the real grievance is the projected uh, dispute you know because the communications have been cut and uh, the lawyers respectively agree with, uh, argue from each side you no know, there is no proper communication with the parties so the the next uh, attempt of the mediator is to restore the communication with the parties and then uh, his next uh, uh, third stage you know he will try to identify where lies the problem we call it identifying the interest or what the underlying interest once the interest has been identified where lies actually the problem once it is identified then the the will the mediator helps the parties to evolve uh, options uh, uh, for solution of the problem once options are uh, uh, no uh, made available from the parties then the mediator will see if both options are not available uh, not acceptable to the parties then the mediator will help the parties to go for alternatives and finally if one of the alternatives suggested by the uh, mediator is agreeable then uh, not suggested by the mediator suggested by the parties is otherwise acceptable to the parties themselves then the mediator will see whether uh, it is uh, legitimate because the, the agreement should be for a legitimate it should be permissible under law settlement should be a legitimate settlement and if it is legitimate then he will take uh, a commitment from the parties that they, how they are going to honor this settlement and this uh, will be drafted and then signed by the parties and the respective lawyers and then sent to the court and the court passes a decree or an order or a judgment whatever you call it you know in terms of this mediation settlement this is the process of mediation so why in, in the, what is the advantage of mediation in advantage of mediation is you know both sides uh, feel happy that's the greatest advantage and like in the court one party is happy one party is partly happy one party is partly Uh, you know uh, uh, angry or you know partly uh, dissatisfied and you know disgusted and frustrated you know then the mind works in order to how to wreak vengeance etc etc this is not there both sides because they are understood acknowledged and uh, they, they they have accepted and this is the best solution they can have and then there is peace in society peace in the family peace in the community and you know the things are uh, taken for this is the greatest advantage of a mediation where there is a win, we call it a win win situation in my experience uh, in the supreme court uh, of five years and eight months i've seen 50% more than 50% of the disputes which have a civil uh, angle including corporate are worth trying for mediation and that is what true also in the high courts and trial courts so people have a, a misunderstanding that mediation is only in a matrimonial dispute no that of course is certainly true but uh, uh, i find that you know it's more effective i don't say more effective it's quite effective in the corporate disputes as well that's why in nclat nclt and nclat they are referring cases to me and others also for uh, uh, what do you call um, mediation and we are attempting to it no because many corporate disputes there will be an underlying problem maybe among the promoters maybe among some of the shareholders maybe among some of the directors maybe you know so there's something somewhere which you can identify and if you can actually settle that will be the end of it 
So um, um, the, the Commercial Courts Act, there's a pre-settlement, uh, pre-litigation mediation, which is made mandatory. Uh, in surface, also there is mediation. In quasi-criminal cases also, we are trying mediation. Uh, like, you know, in 323, for example, the, the uh, IPC 323, you call it, you know, a simple heart. Uh, it must be a simple dispute. And you know, if the parties are sent for mediation, they agree, they can uh, have a compound thing. Uh, they can compound the offense, you know, um, the, the, what you call, maybe the victim gets a little compensation or, you know, they, uh, uh, an, apolog tend an apology is tendered, etc. you know. So the relationship also is restored and the parties are happy and there is no conviction also because uh, uh, under 328, um, uh, there's no conviction. It is uh, acquittal only. So that way, uh, in, cost, in criminal cases also, and some of the costly criminal disputes also, this mediation can be tried. I've seen there are three problems. Let me wind up by saying just three things. Uh, what is the problem in why this mediation is not taken, why is it's not taken off quite well? I don't find it's taken off quite well. One, not because the mediators are not there. There are trained mediators, but uh, um, uh, I don't say that you know, all trained mediators are the, the experts. It all depends because it's a it's a skill. Let me say skill. As a lawyer, also you know, fifty percent is art, fifty percent is craft. Likewise, you know, in mediation also, there's a lot of art and craft left. Mediator is actually a facilitator. He does not give solutions. He only facilitates the parties to evolve solutions from themselves. It will have a lot of impact on the parties also. Sometimes you know, there's an evaluative mediation also where, you know, as an expert, you'll have to tell them, maybe if you're an engineer, if you're a doctor, or if you're a lawyer, or if you're a judge, you know, for that matter, uh, you'll be in a position to say that this is the position. This much you can say, this is called an evaluative uh, mediation also. Other is, the, other is called the person. He said the three blocks. One, one, the mindset of the judges. Many judges all said and done, do not think that this is an effective method. They, according to it's a waste of time. Uh, that is, I do not know, I, I'm not anybody to say that, you know, it is because of their ignorance or whatever it is. But, you know, they should have a mind, their mindset should be changed. Under section 18, you remember now, the judge should form an opinion on each case as to whether this is a case fit enough to be referred to any one of the four methods of uh, alternate dispute resolution arbitration, um, uh, conciliation, mediation, local dialogue. So it is the duty of the court to form an opinion. Uh, in your experience, have you seen this uh, duty being performed by the courts? And if the courts take a genuine interest and the calling the parties and the lawyers and telling them that this is something which you should try instead of spending your time and money and energy in court, you should try and you know restore peace and set, settle the matters amicably. If you can give such a, a a simple uh, suggestions, uh, a simple uh, tips as to the uh, dispute and uh, the way it could uh, be taken forward, etc. I'm quite sure the parties will agree because one word from the court, the parties will really understand. This has been my experience. I'm saying I'm simply sharing my experience. I'll call the parties and the lawyers also and tell them this is all your problem. The lawyer, the judge should make a little little homework. The work is a little, you know, you should do a little more homework, according to me, in mediation, if you're a judge. And then tell the parties and the lawyers that this is the problem, you should try a mediation. Two, the mindset of the lawyers. This is a big problem. The lawyers have a feeling that, you know, in case the cases are sent for mediation and they get settled the matter, it affects them professionally. In the sense, you know, they will not get their uh, fee. This mindset should change. This I'll club with the third one also. This mindset should change because the the without the proper assistance of the lawyers, you know, no mediator or no mediation can uh, have very effective uh, result. Uh, I have certain experiences in my own my own uh, mediations. You know, the parties agreed, but uh, next day when they came, uh, they said, "Sir, my they told me out of uh, the loud towards me, they have confided to me that no, sir, my lawyer did not take it." So I thought, you know, I, I must first uh, mediate with the lawyers. Reason is, you know, reason is, you know, the, once the case is settled in mediation, the lawyer will not get fee. 
this is this mindset which should change. That's why I club it the third one is called mindset the litigants. So what do the litigants want? Litigants want their cases to be finished soon, or they want to continue their uh, litigation forever and you know teach a lesson to somebody else. That will be a minuscule percentage uh, of uh, the litigants uh, in that category, where somebody wants to take revenge on somebody else and you know keep always some some litigation against somebody and uh, and keep them always in court, etc. Who will spend money? Who will spend spend time? Who will spend their energy for this? Will your next generation be interested? You may you will pass on, but the, your next generation will not be interested. Just keep in mind. So, as far as the the litigants mindset. If you if you talk to them very uh, very 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 frankly, they will be quite happy to get an easy solution or a faster solution for their uh, problems. I'll tell you one example. Suppose you know a, 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 a litigant comes to you with uh, a Section 80 notice, uh, and you know it, the, if I am a lawyer, I'll see I can read from the notice what the problem is. I know the person who has sent the notice, not a lawyer, will be a friend of mine. What prevents me? So I can speak to the litigant that you know you want this case to go to court and settle it, or you want this to be case. Should do you do you mind my trying other methods of settling this? But uh, it shall not affect my fees. A lawyer should be paid his fees for the case, not for the <laughs> daily daily appearances. This system of uh, daily appearance fee uh, mindset should change. Uh, I'm sorry uh, if I have. Um, offending any of the lawyers, please uh, pardon me. I'm sharing my life experience as a lawyer for over 21 years. I never ever charged any client for my daily appearance. Even after my designation as a senior lawyer also, I was a senior lawyer for four years prior to my elevation. But even then I did not charge for my uh, appearances in court. I charged only for a case. If I take up a case, I'll see it towards the end and my piece was only to the case and not for bare appearance. But in North, I don't know how far it is practical. I do not know. But uh, for those who can afford, let them do that. But uh, as far as the majority of the litigants are concerned, you can tell the litigants at that stage itself that, you know, if I want to finish your case, this is my fee and you should pay the fee. And if you go to the court, it's your time, it's your money, it's your energy that you're going to pay. So uh, merely because I'm settling it, um, I'm making an attempt and getting it settled. It does not mean that you don't pay my fees. You can tell them in America, even when you make a phone call, not only America, many countries outside India, any any phone call that you make to a lawyer or any call the lawyer makes to you for a clarification, they charge you uh, in terms of the, the time that they spent for uh, speaking to you on the litigation. That's, that is the situation outside. For any, because time is the money. That is the difference, time is the money. So therefore, if you're able to, if it guide the litigants, if the mindset the litigants change, that you know a lawyer is to be paid for, not simply for arguing in the case in the court only, but also for all the efforts he takes for settlement of the case, then this problem of the lawyers can also be solved. So the mindset of the lawyer should be changed, mindset of the litigant should change, mindset of the court should be changed. If there is a, a radical change, I say radical means such a, there is a serious change. Radical means going to the root. Radish root. If there must be a radical change in the mindset of all these three stakeholders in the litigation process, then there will be marvelous results in mediation. This is all I wanted to say in mediation. The rest I will answer you if you have some queries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, we really had the benefit of your experience to get at least an overview of how, as lawyers, we can um, play an active role in settling disputes between litigants. Uh, there are a lot of questions coming in. So one common line of question is, and uh, let me quote the question that we've received from Athar Alam. He asks, how does one try to avoid the impasse created by advocates of either side during the course of mediation? This is something that you touched upon, but I think uh, a lot of our attendees want you to uh, sort of elaborate on this issue. Alam. I'll tell you my experience, how I did it. Uh, I'll tell you my experience in two ways. I have tried, I'm, and in fact, I've tried successfully. In all the arbitrations I've, I've been engaged, in four arbitrations I've settled in mediation. I'll, I'll, when I share my experience, you will understand. 
Yeah, uh, let me come to the litigation first, then I'll go to the arbitration. As far as the mediation is concerned, you know, I, when I, I speak to the lawyers first, when the lawyers come, and uh, gain their confidence and ask them, would you mind my speaking to the parties and uh, settling it? Uh, yeah, they will naturally argue, uh, sir, there is no point in going for a settlement because uh, I have, as uh, Abe said, you know, I, I have already a decree in my hand. Why did I go for a settlement? This is their uh, uh, first argument. I tell them, uh, say, do you think that this is the end of the litigation? Number one. Number two, are you quite sure that, you know, this decree will not be overturned in the first appeal or in the second appeal? And the third thing, ultimately, do you want this... Uh, people to go, you know, to get to, to be disconnected in their relationships in society with all this litigation, somebody winning and somebody losing. So I try first to speak, to, to mediate between the lawyers and just convince them. I speak to their heart, not to their head. It's very difficult to go to the head of a lawyer, but it's uh, easier for me to, to, to appeal to the conscience of the heart of the lawyer. So I speak to the lawyers and win their confidence. Then I talk to the parties. I tell them, See, look here, merely because you are paying the mediator, it does not mean that, you know, you should not pay to the lawyers. You should pay to the lawyers also because, but for the, I, I tell them, but for the cooperation of your lawyers, I cannot settle it. So the lawyers also will be happy. The, the parties also will be happy in the sense, you know, that, you know, the, 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 the cooperation, presence, participation and cooperation of the lawyers are also there in the process of mediation. So they'll also be happy. So this is where I do it in the normal mediation. Let me come to the arbitration. In arbitration, uh, I have uh, four different experiences. Uh, my, my initial enthusiasm when I started in 18 November, I, got, I was a sole arbitrator in that case. So uh, I saw, I, when I read the brief, I said, this is a simple dispute. <laughs> because out of my passionate involvement as a judge in mediation. So also I said, it's a simple dispute. So the first day when the matter was posted, I told the lawyers, why are you, why are you spending your money in paying the arbitrator uh, and the lawyer sector? This is your simple case. Why do you want to uh, complicate it and finish it? Naturally, as Sabe said, you know, lawyers are not happy with that. They, start, they had a grim face. Then I told them, see, this is the service that we have rendered to the parties. So after gaining their confidence, I asked the parties to appear. So in the presence of the parties and the lawyers, I told them that this is a fit case for mediated settlement, but uh, the parties should pay the fees, the fees of the lawyers. And uh, then they said, they will send for mediation. But they said, they insisted that, you know, sir, you should be the mediator. I said, if the mediation fails, I cannot continue as a media, uh, arbitrate. They said, sir, it will not fail, 100%. <laughs> it will not fail, you be the mediator. So in terms of the spirit of section 30 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, I made a simple attempt and I just finished it in uh, one hour. I had a, a settlement hour also. My, the, the arbitrator's fee was drastically cut. It was reduced to 20% because it was finished in uh, two sittings. Though I was not happy with the vote, it, you know, because according to me, an arbitrator who finishes a case uh, faster should be paid more rather than reducing his fees. Anyway, that's a different issue. I left it. I was happy at least that the mediation, my first mediation experience uh, in arbitration was uh, quite successful. Second experience, while well, the matter was uh, uh, in the process of uh, uh, settling the pleadings, I told them, see, now that the pleadings are there, this is all your case. Then why don't you try a mediation? They asked, uh, they, they, they asked me, sir, uh, will you uh, leave us uh, since, you know, it's a corporate uh, dispute. So, uh, so I gave them some tip that, you know, so you have to continue your relationship. Not that, you know, you get an award, the other party goes in 34 appeal, et cetera, et cetera. No, you, and you have a continuing relationship also. So, so I asked the top uh, uh, people in both uh, the sites to sit together and talk. They agreed the top people. I pass an order in arbitration that they should speak. And uh, that is, I think that is uh, reaching a, a, a final uh, amicable solution. Third case, when the evidence was over, I just made an evaluative uh, opinion as to what the case is. Again, I told the parties, uh, why, don't you, why don't you try a mediation? Well, at that stage, 
they agreed they mediated and they settled fourth case when the arguments were over i asked a question to the conscience of the lawyers and the parties do you want an award to be passed or do you want this case to be settled in in this route with the assistance of a mediator because the dispute is not only very narrow compass so why don't you finish it also so that was agreed i referred to a mediator because uh, an external mediator was necessary because we were in a uh, panel of uh, three arbitrators it was not a sole arbitrator so with that uh, uh, matter was not finally settled but we got an advantage because you know a major part of the disputes were settled uh, with the mediator so when it came back to us to the tribunal it was easy for us to finish because some legal uh, issues were involved which only the tribunal could have uh, tackled mediator cannot tackle those legal issues and you know, the legal issues could be tackled only through the arbitrators uh, arbitral panel ar arbitral tribunal so we settled that so a uh, fifth case when the matter was uh, evidence uh, stage reached yeah it is before evidence yes before evidence uh, one side lawyer i, I saluted him he said sir after all this is this dispute only why don't you ask the parties to go for a mediation the other side the said i have to get in section i knew that the said will say that then i again just gave a persuasive evaluation as to what the situation is called the parties also and told them that dukkha this is the dispute so now that it came from the lawyers i was so excited and then you know, that case also is in the process of being settled so it all depends on how passionate the 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 stakeholder or rather i call myself as a duty holder how passionate the duty holder the court the lawyer uh, are in the in in mediation and uh, the uh, to, to help the stakeholder stakeholder is only the litigant duty holders are the the the, the court the lawyer and the mediator so the, if they have a passionate approach the stakeholder can be helped thank you sir firstly also let me thank you for acknowledging that lawyers do have hearts and consciences uh another question uh, which is uh, very interesting is from vp raja uh, considering the government is one of the biggest litigant he asks what happens in cases where one of the parties is the government or a public sector organization or a bank in that situation is mediation possible because in many cases either because of audit or uh, some sort of later inquiry the government or the public sector is not very enthusiastic about settling a dispute how does one persuade uh, the government to go and settle the disputes yeah it is there where the court and the uh, legal adviser uh, have a major role to play the court has a major role because uh, anything that comes from the court will naturally have to appeal be it the government be it the public sector be it the bank so if the court makes a suggestion and gives an indication that it is better for you to purchase peace and finish it otherwise uh, it will difficult if you finish at this stage it will be advantageous to you as well so some sort of uh, an evaluative uh, persuasion comes uh, even through formal order also you can pass it also i had a case while i was a judge i made an evaluative in uh, evaluative and indicate you uh, uh, pass an order uh, as to what the situation is so that you know it could be discussed uh, at the game of affairs and then you know it could be thrown open for uh, mediation because if it is taken forward there's a high risk involved if it is settled through mediation there's only less risk involved and we stand to gain if the stand to gain expression is used by the court and the legal adviser also gives such an opinion that this is only your standing to gain only then no auditor can touch you no controller and auditor general also can touch you because it is a court involved process right. again again i tell you it all depends on the duty holders uh, commitment and passion the court the mediator legal adviser right sir uh, um we have a question by abhay damle uh, he says that parties at times go for conciliation mediation or lok adalat because more out of frustration or more out of compulsion uh, what can we do to improve 
the situation so that parties willingly go for uh, alternate dispute resolution and not yeah. as a last resort yeah see uh, in, in the, you are right some of the cases you know just to dots from your uh, responsibility court say go for uh, long other go for uh, mediation say in mediation please keep in mind you cannot compel because uh, it's a process where both sides should agree arbitration that should be an agreement for arbitration whereas for uh, this long adalat even if the parties do not agree also you can the court can always suffer. so if you, if you want to dots from your uh, uh, what you call a life uh, your your duty to take up the case for trial and finish it up you know sometimes you you, you, you simply not get to long adalat that some rarely happens also but this can be prevented if a uh, lawyer on both sides uh, meet and discuss and that you know it is the interest of both sides so why don't we try that you know so it all depends on the lawyers on both sides the the the, the fellowship that's why they they called in you know, a land of brother so this brotherhood uh, uh, and fellowship among the lawyers is very important as far as settlement of cases uh, be it in mediation or be it in long adalat this concern so once the lawyers on both sides agree in principle that this is something which we should try in mediation or long adalat that will uh, go a long way in the in changing the mindset of both sides right uh, thank you there is another common uh, theme of questions that we are getting um it is about the characteristics or qualities that a good mediator should have and a follow up question on this would also be that do you think there is a requirement for professional mediator institutions as we have professional arbitral institutions is there also a need for a professional medi mediating institution there are quite a few there are quite a few there are uh, good institutions uh, delhi international mediation center is a professional institution in bangalore we have in singapore have i am a, a member of that singapore international mediation center um, um they, I, I, there are several such professional institutions it's certainly good because you know there are, there are such a professional institutions people have a lot of faith and trust in those institutions uh, uh, getting involved in uh, selecting a mediator appropriate to the nature of the dispute and getting it settled so it's certainly very good to have uh, professional mediation and professional mediation centers and so what about uh, according to you the characteristics or um, the the sort of um, features of a good mediator what do you think those yeah, are yeah 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 he one he should have a, a passion for mediation according to me. that's the most important passion for mediation a passionate mediator will not leave the parties normally because you know you have a follow up and then no yes number one passion for mediation two he should be an absolutely neutral person three he should have uh, his credentials very good in the sense you know he should be in a position to win the trust of the uh, trust of both sides and then a fair amount of knowledge of uh, the the situations uh, legally and factually this also these four aspects are important in mediation for a good mediator right sir uh, just a follow up question on this from one advait mishra he asks uh, how does a good mediator stop his own prejudices and his own views on the party's dispute from interfering with the mediation process misra say if you are a, if you are approaching a judge a judge uh, at least supposed to be trained <laughs> i don't know my mind is like that now uh, at least or perceived to be trained to be discharging his duties without fear or favor affection or ill will so he will be a totally disassociated or disconnected person from his personal philosophy or uh, ideology or uh, political views etc etc so the moment you are discharging that function as a judge he will be totally disconnected i am tell you out of my conscience i can tell you i have never ever been influenced by any of my views on any aspect because as a judge you will only see what the uh, law is and what the situation is and you apply it to the law to the situation and finish it up irrespective of uh, your uh, views because that is totally sealed 
when you discharge your duties. Therefore, uh, mediators, uh, that's why I said, you know, a mediator should be a person who should be in a position to command that trust of both sides, okay. his neutrality, and that, you know, that will be a person who should be, can be confided with, that he will be, he'll keep confidential, but uh, it's, it's, it's the same as Uber Mafia, the good faith. This good faith contract is also there between them. You know, it is confidential. He can never ever divulge anything which he has been told confidentially to a mediator. So maybe just one last question. Uh, we have a question from Raghav Khanna. He asks, uh, how can technology be used in ADR on, or mediation practices? And just a question from uh, my side or as a follow-up on this. Do you believe that Personal interaction, as in meeting a person face to face, is more effective uh, for settling disputes between parties rather than emails or rather than meeting somebody over a screen. Hundred percent, Abhay. In mediation, the physical presence of the parties is very important. But uh, if that is not possible, then you can have because uh, nowadays we are trying. I'm trying. I'm doing this online mediation also. So therefore, uh, left, that is left without an alternate remedy. You know, we always uh, start that, you know, uh, just before the grounds, we say left without an alternate remedy, uh, the petitioner um, invokes this to this extraordinary jurisdiction of this honorable court. So we, we are, uh, there is no other way we can do that. So therefore, we do this online. But if possible, always better to have physical presence because, you know, there's, because I, as I told you, you know, it is not an appeal to the head. Is an appeal to the heart. Right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for taking out time and uh, coming and addressing all of us on this issue. Uh, very often, because, after. Uh, I just take one more minute, uh, one more sentence, because, you know, in mediation, I first tell the parties, you know, you forget about uh, your legal merits. Merits, if you are arguing, then it's a matter for the court to decide. So don't go on the merits of your case. Merits and demerits leave the lawyers and the courts together. You have come to the mediation just to close your head and open your heart because you are not evaluating as to how good is your case, how bad is your case, how better to solve or better not to solve, how will be the final result, etc. No, that is not the situation for a mediation. That situation is, you know, well, we want a solution now. Let us not prolong the, the, the disputes. Let's resolve one way or another. A bit of we take a bit of give and take. Somebody gives, other body, another one takes. You know, without giving, you cannot take. So a bit of give and take somewhere, you know, and then you know, that is not uh, under law. What is you are entitled or with uh, you are respected to? But you know, law apart, you are you know uh, taking a, a, what you call in the best interests of uh, the situation, and uh, you know it is always uh, uh, just fair, proper, reasonable, and prudent to have a settlement because uh, in one case, in one case I said about mediation arbitration, no, a party would have got an award for maybe uh, uh, hundreds of uh, uh, crores. But you know, in mediation, that party agreed for a uh, little less than uh, uh, 50 crores. And you know, he got that money that is immediately prior to this uh, COVID. So he was so prudent. Uh, he said, you know, a bird in hand is what in the bush. He's 100% right. Look at uh, how, how uh, clever he was, you know, he agreed because he got that money and, you know, uh, that, that uh, few crores in hand in this lockdown situation is worth, a, I would say, <laughs> a 500 after uh, 10 years. No, certainly, as you said, the bird in hand is certainly better than uh, two in the bush. And uh, so I think uh, you were able to point out to us that ultimately the most important person in this system, which comprises of lawyers, which comprises of judges, is we all tend to forget that the most important person is the litigant. And all of us have taken the oath to serve justice. And justice is served only when the litigant goes back happy. And ideally, both the litigants go back happy. So uh, we will certainly gain from all the anecdotes that you have shared with us, your ideas that you have shared. And uh, I was about to say that in the course of our submissions, at the end of our submissions, we often mechanically say we're obliged. But uh, I'm sure that all of us are really obliged today. 
for this wonderful webinar that you conducted thank you so much sir we thank really you thank you so much abhay and abigail both of you have been fascinating after me uh, you have been after me to have to spare some time i'm happy that i could do that thank you sir thank uh, you god bless you this is what i pay back to the society thank you very much sir god bless you jai hind for all our attendees uh, we would just like to inform you that this will be uploaded on our uh, youtube channel and the link will be shared uh, on our social media pages so you can go back and revisit this lecture at your own leisure whenever it is convenient for you uh, i would also like to announce today that our next speaker uh, is mr dushan dave who is the president of our uh, supreme court bar association he will be speaking on uh, the topic about contribution by bar associations in contemporary scenario mr dave as we all know is a firebrand speaker and i'm sure his lecture will also be very interesting so please do join us for that the details about that will be posted very soon on all our social media pages um, i now would like to declare this session to be over once again before we leave i would like to thank our speaker for coming and delivering this lecture thank you very much i hope all of you stay safe in these difficult times thank you you too you too all the best yeah.